Welcome to IPT2, and this week it's all about weight loss. Oh, here we go. So, weight loss. This is probably one of the biggest things we talk about when it comes to personal training, the fitness industry, and everything else. There's so many varying opinions, so many people have things to say about it, and I'm pretty sure when we're done with this episode today, some people out there are going to agree with what I say, and some people probably won't. There's going to be people who just disagree with me on a fundamental level, and there's going to be people who are going to be in agreement. So really, it's looking at weight loss as a whole. We we aren't just looking at weight loss anymore as, as calories in versus calories out and this or that, because there's so many caveats to weight loss. What I am going to discuss, though, today is... Briefly, how we can help people with their weight loss. So, we obviously have a nutrition course here at IPT. We give it as part of the personal training diploma if you buy the e-learning or the fast track. You can obviously purchase it. It is something you can purchase, and it's all done online with an exam at the end to show us that you can actually structure your nutrition for a client. And it can be any client. It doesn't have to be uh, a personal training client. It can be your mom or dad, spouse, whoever. Uh, We just need some relevant information and then for you to go through the process that we advise, which is the IPT method. The IPT method is all about creating a a zone of calories uh, and we call it the Goldilocks zone. So the reason we do this is because too many people get hyper-focused on calories to start with and they don't understand that there is going to be levels of people's ability to do things and I don't mean that uh, the client's stupid and they don't know how to do things I literally mean that they might not be at the right time in their life or the right time in their training to to change things. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well, I mean, first of all, can we get the calories right for the client? Because possibly they are under or overeating. So they're not going to experience weight loss if they're under overeating. The body will slowly just not do the things that it should do. If you're under eating, you might be consuming less calories, but your body is going to be pushing back quite hard and maybe take on more water weight. It might be using up your muscle uh So there's going to be other detrimental effects. And yes, if you are in a consistent calorie deficit, uh, you, you probably will end up losing weight, but it's not going to be good weight and it's not going to be the, the thing that makes the massive difference here. The thing that makes the massive difference here is when we are in the right calorie zone for what we're trying to achieve, i.e. if we're trying to achieve weight loss and it's sustainable weight loss and it's a change of homeostasis, we can't just 
expect the body to have 700 calories less and then work perfectly. It won't. We can't expect the body to go to the gym when it's not getting fed properly. We can't expect a, a lot of things from the body because guess what? You're you're not managing the, the calorific intake. So the very first thing we need to get correct is the calories for a person. And once we've got the calories for a person, we can then start to find out what their maintenance zone is. Now, typically, there's a few calculations you can use to, to find out uh, what the, the BMR is, the basal metabolic rate. And then you can apply the Harris-Benedict formula uh, to, to those uh, equations and you can come up with the maintenance for a person, i.e. how many calories do they need per day? Now, we're all human here, so <clears throat> straight away we should understand not all days look the same. Not all days do we function the same way. That's hard for some people to, to recognize. So that this is why we have the calorie Goldilocks zone. Because on some days, you will expend more calories. And on some days, you'll expend less calories. For instance, today... I have unfortunately only done about 4,000 steps. Yesterday I did 12,000. Now, yes, that's steps, that's neat, but that's part of the equation. It's also going to be part of my calorie balance. So if... I have a day where I'm extremely active, I'm going to be at the high end of my calorie zone. And the days that I'm not active, I'm going to be aiming to be at the lower end of my calorie zone. So that means that clients don't get hyper-focused on trying to hit one target every single day. They get a little bit of leeway. But as long as they get into the zone, they will be able to get consistency because they will start to understand what works for them. We will be able to get them into the consistency of the days they train. They will have this type of diet to get them to get into that calorie zone. And then on the days they don't train, they, they may eat just a little bit less. And typically, on the days they don't train, we would be looking for them to eat a lot less in the way of carbohydrates, if anything, because they don't need as much energy. Now, that's, that's the first basic level. And obviously, if we want somebody to lose weight, we have to put them into a calorie deficit. Now, unlike before, when somebody might be eating in a massive calorie deficit and doing adverse things to the body... This time we are looking at a small calorie deficit, which we can then increase, but we don't need to increase it by always taking calories off the diet. Sometimes we can ask the client to increase their activity level if it's a possibility. That way you're still allowing them to, to have filling meals and eat properly Instead of just saying, right, 500 calories straight off your diet, that's what's happening. Maybe you take 300 calories off their diet and they do 200 calories on a treadmill or some sort of ca cardio or they get additional steps that burn 200 calories. That way they're still getting enough in their food that their body doesn't get into this bad state, doesn't release too much cortisol, 
doesn't have an, any adverse effects because we're still feeding the body enough. We're just doing a little bit more activity to give us more of a calorie burn that takes us into that deficit a little bit more. But what about the days when they're they're not in the gym? Well, that's where you can maybe increase their NEAT and get the same effect. But on the days that they're not in the gym, they should be eating a little bit less anyway, so that it shouldn't be as hard on the body. We also need to look at the type of calories you're eating. Now, this is where the second level really comes in. So if you're in a, a calorie deficit, the recommendation from us is always that you go slowly. Take off maybe 100 calories a week for the first few weeks or up to four or five weeks. And then you're going to be at your, your calorie deficit, the 500. That is the magical number. Now, in case you're wondering why 500 is a magical number, before we go into the next level, when we look at seven days and seven times five, seven times five would be 3,500. 3,500 just so happens to be the amount of calories that you need to burn to lose one pound of body weight. Now, notice how I say one pound of body weight. This is because, yes, it is true you lose a pound of body weight, but that body weight can come from different sources, <coughs> all dependent on what you're doing, all dependent on the type of calories you're eating. For instance, if you got rid of fat from your diet, and you were just eating protein and, I mean, lean protein, not, not any animal fats, and no fats whatsoever, uh, your body would quite quickly start to eat into those uh, fat stores. But you might also have just the same size fat cells because the carbohydrates, they might get stored in the fat cells because you're missing an element of your diet, i.e. the fat. You need to still eat fat. You need carbohydrates and you need proteins. You need a good balance of them, but that's at level two. So 3,500 calories to lose one pound of body weight. So that means you must be in a 500 calorie deficit each day to burn that. This is why when we talk about in the, the PT course, when people say, I want to lose two pounds per week, <clears throat> and by all means, that can be safe to do. The NHS have always stated one to two pounds per week is safe. And in some cases, some people will lose more than that, especially if they've got a lot of weight to lose or a lot of water they're withholding in their body. But if you want to lose two pounds per week, you need to double that. That's 7,000 calories deficit. That's 1,000 calories a day. That means if you are a healthy woman and you're just part of the general population, the advice is 2,000 calories a day to stay healthy. So you'd be eating 1,000. Now, obviously... That's a very basic outlook because we would do the calculations and find out what you need. And technically, yes, it's possible, but you'd have to up the amount of uh, activity you're doing per day because we wouldn't want to take a 1,000 calories off your diet. That's ludicrous. Sure, you can do it. And sure, we see bodybuilders have quite low calorie diets for uh, weeks on end when they're getting close to the end of uh, prep for their, for their bodybuilding shows. But we also see the adverse effects of that. We see eating disorders happen with some 
bodybuilders. Not every bodybuilder, and it's not to say that bodybuilding is rife with eating disorders. It's not right to say that at all. Uh, bodybuilding is a great sport, but it, it is what it is. You are going to be in low calories. It's maybe not the healthiest of things to do, but you will look extremely good. You will look ripped. You will be able to step on stage and see every single muscle if done properly. But when we talk about most people, they don't want to be bodybuilders. They don't want to be on stage. They just want to lose weight and look and feel better. So what do we do? Do we go to the second level here? I would say go to the second level with a client. Once they're ready for it, if a client understands that they are going to be in the gym doing X amount of workouts per week, they're probably ready to get the calories correct. And once they get the calories correct and they showed they can be consistent, we can then look at the second level, which is macronutrients. So those proteins, those carbs, and those fats. But what's the best macronutrient count? Well, that really depends. If it's just general population, 40, 40, 20 might be the best way to go. That's 40% uh, carbohydrates, 40% proteins, 20% fats. So it's quite a balanced diet as such, and it's probably one of the more balanced ones out there. But at this second level, before we look at the macronutrients and what's best for a client, we have to actually look at what they currently can keep consistent at. So they might be more paleo. They might be better at intermittent fasting. They might be vegan. There's going to be different diets out there that your clients are capable of keeping consistent to and whatever they can keep consistent to is what works and that's what we work with that's how we get the client to lose weight by taking the diet they already have bringing it into the calorie zone that we need it to be in Helping the client understand that on days they're doing more activity, they can go to the higher range. And on days they're doing more activity, they should be in the lower range. Having a range at all allows them to not hyper-focus on one number. Means that they won't be just, I I need to hit this, say, 2,451 calories. That's what I need to hit today. And then when they go slightly over, they break down mentally that this has been a big problem in the past with having just one number for a client to stick to if they're above it they they break down and think that they have done wrong and if they're below it they feel like they've not eaten enough or they've got excess calories for tomorrow whereas if they have a calorie zone to land in They just feel satisfied once they've landed in the zone. So even if they have a high activity day and they make it into the calorie zone, that's fine. Then they just restart tomorrow. They don't think about the excess calories that they didn't eat because they don't get to add that to tomorrow because they're sticking to a calorie Goldilocks zone. It's where they fit best. So... Obviously, on our our IPT course about nutrition in real life, we discuss how to do the IPT method, but it's not rocket science. It's it's basically using a couple of very simple equations to make sure that we get that Goldilocks zone for the client. Now, we've got the client's diet, whatever it is, we have now got them into the calorie zone we want them to be. So we're now moving on to level two, which is the macronutrients. Now, if your client has a very carb-heavy diet, 
and they feel that they are bloated or they are struggling to to lose the weight that they think they should be losing. It might be because of the carbohydrates. It might be time for them to start to change. It might be time for a macronutrient look. Now, we all know that, or we should know if you're doing your PT course or not, this should be some basic knowledge. You need to have fat in your diet so that certain functions can happen. But fat is not an important element, as in it's not going to be your main driver for energy. Your main driver for energy is going to come from your carbohydrate sources. So carbohydrates are like putting diesel in the tank. You know, it's going to be where you get the majority of your energy from uh, when you're doing training or just daily activity. Protein has many functions. It can be used as an energy source. It's not the best one, and it's not the, the, the readily available one that we need it to be. That's where the carbs come in. That's why we need to have a good balance of carbs, and we need to have good types of carbs. But we also need to have good protein as well. We can get a lot of fats, in our diet from animal protein. Again, that's not going to be for every client, but it is going to be for a lot of clients. Uh, the sources of fat from animals are going to help with things to do with your cholesterol and so on. It's also going to be able to, to get you some of that fast-acting energy that we need. But the massive function that protein plays, and we all know that it plays this function, is that it helps us to build muscle. When we break down the body's muscle through exercise, we need to have protein available for the body to repair the muscle. We, without going too in-depth on this, this podcast, need to have that there so it can be repaired. And then if the muscle is repaired and you've done the workout properly, your muscle will grow. Muscle needs more calories per uh, other cells. For instance, a, a, a cell of body fat doesn't need calories to, to do things. It's just there. Uh, the, the, the cells themselves can get bigger. They can store more. Your muscles can also store energy, but they also expend more calories. So the more muscle you have on the body, the more calories you literally burn per day. And this is where when you're you're losing weight and you see like an increase in weight, it could be because you put on a little bit of muscle. And when you put on some muscle, your body tends to store water. So already we have, a, a, maybe maybe the body hasn't lost the weight that you want it to lose, but by all means it will eventually because you're in your calorie deficit, you've now added a little bit of muscle, so your body will eventually get to that point where it will be uh in a proper deficit to, to conclude that weight loss. But typically, if you're going back to the gym after a little while away or the gym is new to you and you're trying to lose weight as the first kind of goal, typically you might see a spike in your weight. It might go up, first of all, and then start to come down once it starts to balance out and the homeostasis changes. Now... On a weight loss journey as well, typically what a, a person will do is they will stick to whatever calories they've been given and they'll stick to it for a long time. And that's where, again, we might see plateaus happen. Now, plateaus happen quite often and people don't know what to do with it. But that's, 
it's a very easy thing to do if we think about it. We should recalculate. Recalculate the Goldilocks zone. Now, how often should you do this? I would say every month if you can, but at the very least every two months or any time you see a, a big jump in weight loss. So technically over the course of a month, if you're in a calorie deficit all the time, then you you should lose four pounds. That that should be what happens over the course of a month. Now, if you have lost those four pounds, if you have lost more than those four pounds, shouldn't you recalculate your weight? Because a lot of the, the facts and figures that, well, two of them at the very least, will have changed. So first of all, your weight will have changed. Uh, so maybe maybe that's the, the biggest one to focus on here. But when, when we're looking at the, the factors that we put into the calculation, uh, we're, we're looking at height, age, and weight. Those are three of the biggest aspects of the calculation. And if your weight has changed by four pounds, that might be significant to change the entire equation. And you might get more calories, you might get less calories really depends. And again, this is layer two. We're still talking about the, the macronutrient layer and now how to really think about the weight loss and how to build upon the weight loss. So, so technically, we're now moving into level three where we're recalculating because of plateau. When plateau happens, that's, again, a factor that could play into you wanting to to recalculate or it could be just that every month you want to recalculate uh, and again this is where commonly a lot of people go wrong if if you were maybe a member of weight watchers in the past and you lose weight and then there's a plateau the first thing they tell you to do is eat less calories they haven't even explored the fact that you might need some more calories before you release weight because now your body's in a different homeostasis. You might have more lean muscle tissue, so your body might need some calories for that lean muscle tissue before we talk about deficits and the release of body weight. Remember, it's trying to keep your body in fine tune, almost like a car. If you don't put all the elements in a car, things start to go wrong with the engine very quickly. So, looking now to another layer, another level. Now, we've looked at the, getting the calories light. We, we've looked at how we can help the person with a diet. Uh, we can look at different elements within that diet to change as well. And that's a whole different process that we talk about on the nutrition course. And again, changing elements should be done one by one. There should never be multiple things that uh, you should be trying to change at the same time because that ultimately leads to clients getting stuck and not losing weight. And again, this is this is where we, we get them into that calorie deficit. We've done the calculations. We now understand where macronutrients come in. Again, <clears throat> if a person's in the gym breaking down the muscle, the protein element should be good. We should look at the energy levels they have. If they've got good energy levels, we can look at either keeping the carbohydrates the same or decreasing them uh, depending on how the client responds, all within the diet that they already are eating. So again, dependent on intermittent fasting, or whatever else they're doing, paleo, doesn't really matter as long as we're helping the client stick to what they can keep consistent at. 
if the if we obviously saw an adverse effect, if we saw the weight go up too much, then that's when we would uh, grind it to a halt, recalculate again, and maybe reanalyze what the client's doing because they might not be honest. They might be telling fibs about how much they're eating, so you might have to use different uh, tactics. Now, when we look at the next level beyond uh, your macronutrients, beyond the recalculations, we really need to look at how the body responds to these type of things. We need to look at the, the level of muscle a person has in comparison to their, their body weight. And these aren't always easy bits of information to get. So this is why it isn't always something that uh, personal trainers dive into. But you can get, obviously, scales nowadays. You do have things like the in-body device that can help get you more information about your client. If you get that information and you understand how much lean body weight they have, then you can obviously advise how many pounds of uh, protein they should, or how many grams of protein they should have per pound of lean body weight. And if they're in the gym training and they are ultimately trying to lose weight and we keep the protein optimal, first of all, that's going to make sure that we maintain that lean body mass, that any any workouts they're doing with intensity is going to be helpfully, uh, helpfully done at the end of the day because they can repair with the amount of protein they're eating. It'll also keep them satisfied. Protein is notorious for satiety and keeping you satisfied in meals. So again, we want that. It's the trigger in the brain that tells our stomach we're full. That's why when you have a big steak, you feel like you can't eat anymore because you, you literally, your brain is telling your stomach you've got enough protein. Now, it is a fallacy that you should only have 30 grams of protein per sitting. Our body can handle much more. The science backs it up now. So that's not a, a thing to worry about. Uh, your protein shake after a workout doesn't really matter. Uh, I would tend to lean towards having a meal, at least an, around about the hour mark or before uh, after a workout. So if you work out anywhere 30 minutes to an hour afterwards, if you have a meal, that will obviously help with the recovery process. It gets you the, the nutrients that you need to help with that. The, the protein shake may be helpful, but again, it's just a protein shake. It's just whey. So unless you're a bodybuilder and uh, you are trying to maximize the amount of muscle you're putting on, protein shake might not be applicable to, to most clients. Again, it might be that the client takes that protein shake and that's a consistency thing. So again, something to look at. But that's where this new layer comes in. If we understand the muscle the body has, if we can feed that muscle properly, make sure that all the calories are kind of going towards that, then we can see what's left over calorie-wise for energy levels and so on. So we still want to have that mix of proteins, carbs and fats. But if we know we need maybe a little bit more uh, protein to make sure that that muscle is maintained well, we may have to change the macronutrient count. And with that, and with the recalculations every one or two months or when you hit a plateau, with looking at the person's personal goals. So, you know, if, if, for instance, a client wants to eat less takeaways or drink less, 
we should be able to support those nutritional goals as well as part of the weight loss process. And that's weight loss at its simplest form. You hear so many people online these days and you can hear me huffing and puffing here that have these opinions that you need to eat this way, you need to eat that way. I hopefully have just broken down how succinct it is to, to, to eat the way that you want to eat, the way that works for you. I hope I, I've been succinct in the way that I've explained how weight loss works. Weight loss is a calories in versus calories out kind of deal. We've, we've shown that time and time again. You can see that through the documentaries like Super Size Me where people have it at McDonald's or junk food. But they do change other health markers because they eat that kind of stuff. So as a personal trainer, we don't want to just advocate that we get the person into a calories in versus calories out because ultimately, yes, they will lose weight, but ultimately they will have bad health markers. They, they may not do the best when it comes to their health of the heart and lungs. Their cardiovascular system might not be as good. Their immune system might not be as good. And certainly there's a lot of biomarkers that, that go adverse because of eating junk food all the time. So when you hear somebody saying calories in versus calories out, sure, that's the beginning of the process. That's level one. We, we find the maintenance level and we work from there. And then when you hear these people harp on about how it's the quality of your, your food that you eat, yeah, that's a different level. It's an additional level to, to what we're doing. So we do have to make sure that the quality of protein is good. And I, I personally like to use good slices of steak, good chicken as much as possible. But we have to be we have to be mindful that we don't live in a world where all things are equal. People will still eat packets of meat. They still will eat different things that meat out of a tin and and so on. So we want to get it as good as possible, as good as the person can. And then over time, we can work on those aspects of changing things to, to better if we can. And then we have the group of people who are going to advocate macros and it's all about the macronutrients. And yes, it is to an extent going to be the next level because once you get the right macros for a person, which again is very an individual thing, it's not a case of we say this is the best one for what you're doing. It's what do they currently have macronutrient split wise? So what proteins do they eat so far? Carbohydrates, what fats? And what would we advise change wise? And what do they think they can change? And if we work with the client and give them the autonomy to make some of those changes, to focus on one change at a time, we can implement that next layer. And then if we want to go above and beyond that, we can start to look at the next layer, which is how much muscle tissue do they actually have already? What are they doing in the gym? What is their next goal? Because ultimately we probably will lose weight along the way of this journey because this is a journey. This isn't, we, we shouldn't implement all these levels at one time. Like, like we've said that the, the client should be focused on one thing at a time and that might take a month. Each level might take a month to really implement properly with the client. But then at the end of the day, the client's going to be leaner, probably going to have the better muscle tone because we've implemented these steps slowly. We haven't just said, right, from day one, you need to do all of this. 
because that could make a client crack. It could make them feel really out of place and it could be really disturbing to their lives because we don't know how the client's going to react until they have less calories. They, they might be okay if you take 500 calories away or they could be really narky. They could become a bit of a horrible person and get hangry all the time. We don't know this until we start the journey, so we still need to be able to adapt on the way just like we do with the physical side of training. And if you can implement step one, the calorie zone, the Goldilocks zone, step two, we get them comfortable and consistent. Step three, we get them to change things about their diet. Step four, we then can start to implement the macronutrients and the quality of foods. And in step five, we can start to think about how much does the body they actually live in need. And within that journey, we should be recalculating. And if we hit plateaus, we should be looking for solutions. Sometimes it will be a recalculation of calories. Sometimes it will be looking for something within their diet that isn't going right. And that's why when we talk about weight loss, it, it's such a controversial subject because everybody has their opinions on it. There will be people who listen to this podcast and probably rip this podcast to shreds. There will be some of you out there that may understand that this is a process that takes time and especially in a world where people want results and they want them now, it can be hard to explain to a client that your weight loss is going to take time. But we need to be strong enough as fitness professionals to say that, by the way, to lose a pound of body weight, you need to be eating 3,500 less calories per week. And if you want to lose two pounds of body weight per week, you need to be eating 7,000 less calories per week. And if we can get the client to understand that when they come in with their weight loss goals and we explain the time frame and we explain what we need from them, the consistency, then we can help these people get to their goals and you can then have that reputation of being a fantastic coach, a fantastic personal trainer, a person who gets their clients to their goals. And probably just to, to top everything off just now, you know, when we look at weight loss, there is going to be science coming out in the future. We, we have some of it already, like a, a Zempic and Wegovy, that, yeah, you can take an injection and you can lose weight. What I would say to, to that at this moment in time, yes, these things have went through clinical trials and they showcase that they help get you to lose weight and so on. But what's the forfeit? What's the thing that's going to happen in the future? Because they don't know that yet. They, they don't know the, the side effects, the realities of taking these drugs in the future, what's your life going to be like 20 years down the line? Is there going to be side effects? I would say if you want that fast and easy way out, you may end up with some adverse effects. We, we see people who lose a lot of weight, that they lose it too fast. They end up with loose skin or they get too heavy. They end up with loose skin. What we're not doing is dealing with the, the fundamental issues that we have as a society and weight loss and, and eating and nutrition. We are still living in a, a society that, that deems people to be X, Y, and Z and pigeonholes people. You can have a look at 
sports, for instance, and different sports, you will have different body types. You will have people who do really successful things with a different body because that body is better for doing that job. So it doesn't mean that everybody needs to lose weight and look like a supermodel. It doesn't mean that every guy needs to look like a fitness model. You should be happy to be feeling better in your own skin. And I think part of the journey of weight loss is definitely that you understand you should enjoy the journey as well as the result. Sure, get the client to visualize that result, how well they will feel every time that they put on that shirt or dress that didn't fit them before. We should then, at the end of the weight loss journey, be providing how they maintain that for the rest of their life. Because again, that's where the weight loss journey seems to fall flat on its face, especially with personal trainers. They don't cap the journey with a maintenance phase so that the client can then get consistency at maintenance. And you have to remember, we have to slowly reverse that maintenance. So just like we slowly get the person into the calorie deficit, we slowly reverse that to their maintenance at the end to cap it off. That way, the body has no adverse effects. And if there is any effects, we can then be the person who is there to help the client through it by recalculating their calories, by making sure that that's what they're like. And then if the client understands that if life changes and they become more sedentary, they might need to change their calories again. They might have to need for recalculation or they might have the need to come back and work with us again. But not because they've put on massive amounts of weight, but because they need some more education and help in that department. And because probably by then they'll like working with us, hopefully. So... Hopefully this has been an interesting one. I really could speak for a long time on weight loss and different subject matter to do with weight loss. And we could go delving deeper into things and different topics to do with nutrition. But ultimately, as a personal trainer, you need to know your stuff. You need to know the way you like to direct weight loss with your client. And maybe you don't agree with the way that I've just described it, but I can guarantee that is a solid way to get success with your clients. And if you are interested in finding out more, if you're interested in a nutrition course, if you're just interested in having a chat, uh, please get in touch. And the final thing before we go today is that we are on pre-sale for our fast track course. It starts in not too long a time. September 4th, Wednesday, 6 p.m. is going to be week one or introductory week. You are going to be with us for 12 weeks. As part of the fast track course, you can't get rid of us after 12 weeks because we will still be there to help you and support you after 12 weeks. Uh, if you don't get the course finished in 12 weeks, you can continue on and we will still be there supporting you. You will also get the nutrition, the programming, the social media, and most importantly, the two-day business course added in as part of your package. And obviously, it's the active IQ diploma we do. In our eyes, the absolute top education package that you can get in the country at this moment in time. And with us adding to it with our own backgrounds and own uh, success stories, that's where you get the real education, the marriage between 
why we teach the theory and what it actually means to the real life of it all. So if you know somebody who would be interested in the course, if you know that you're interested in the course, then drop us a message at IPT qualifications. You can contact us via the website, via comments down below, or just by emailing, just by Instagram, TikTok, anywhere there's social media, you'll find us. And don't be afraid to just put your hand up and say that you want involved. There is only 20 spaces available. And believe us, if you are part of that 20, you are then going to be set up for starting your career in 2025 because you'll be finished by the end of the year and you will be ready to rock and roll as of January. And that's where you want to be when it comes to personal training, kicking off January in the gym with a new business, ready to help people, ready to market yourself and willing and able to take people on because that's when people need the help and support and you will be there ready and able. Anyway, enough about us and our course. Remember, if you need any support at all, please contact us. And until next time, guys, it's been IPT2 and hopefully you've enjoyed this little chat on weight loss. Take care until next time, guys.